All right, this is Chris from BadRap.com. I am here with Pamphlet MC at Twitter.com. So, uh, who is Pamphlet? Pamphlet is a character I created when I started battle rapping. It was a guy that had been sort of simmering for years in my psychosis and was finally ready to be flourished towards a uh, group of admiring citizens that might appreciate what it was I had to offer. And uh, how long have you been around the, the UK scene? I have supported it since the jump off days, as a lot of the great battle rappers have. It gave you a, uh, a basis that you were able to build on in terms of how we were going to progress the scene. I, I think, um, yeah, a lot of us that have sort of Kruger was on the jump off uh, forums a, a while ago. We watched the progression and we are really trying hard to improve it in whatever way we can, whatever way we can. And it's like a spawning ivy plant in terms of its roots going everywhere here. Uh, let's talk about that. Why do you think that the UK scene, um, as it's blossomed, has only really produced one bloom, uh, whereas in, in North America you have like all of these different leagues popping, popping up right now. Do you know what um, I genuinely feel about King of the Dot, and this is no diss to organic because I'd love to come out, but obviously I need help doing so, so I'm not going to come from my back all the way, um, is that towards the start and the middle, it was your guys like Pat Stay, your Holohan, um, but also your guys like, I can't even remember their names, they began with A though, a couple of them, Aspire, people like that who were bringing jokes. And then it kind of, I mean, I don't watch sort of American battle rappers and it became sort of mainly American battle rappers. So I lost interest. I was a lot happier with the King of the Dot product when it was something raw on par with England. So uh, my answer to that would be, I can't remember what the question was, but that England and America are two different things. But I mean, I was going to have a point out there at the end of my second that all my references were English, which is rare these days because a lot of uh, references are based on American TV and I just don't watch that. I grew up in England, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how is Pamphlet, uh, the character that you were talking about before, uh, different than you as a person outside of the ring? So as I say, it was spawned from me. It was a really flamboyant character and it got over through its flamboyancy. So I played off on that greatly over the start of my career and towards the middle, but towards the end, I was trying to adapt and become more serious in ways that I hadn't yet uh, previously experienced. So um, the, the pamphlet characters kind of died over the, the months and maybe a year because I'm me now, do you know what I mean? It's hard living that pamphlet character 24 hours a day. So uh, you mentioned the, the flamboyance of your early battles. Um, there was a lot of kind of is, is he or isn't he, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in, in, in real life. Uh, and in the last, I guess, six months or so, there's been a lot more flamboyance from other battle rappers yeah, yeah, in the yeah. scene. Uh, Daylight's been using it as a technique yeah, yeah, yeah. to get a lot of attention. Um, you know, do, or did you father that style? Do you know what? When I was listening to your review of this event, I was in the bath after a 10 hour shift at work and I was kind of just Candles. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, it was romantic, yeah. And I had your voice uh, sifting through my ears like a, a broken wok with too many holes in it. And I was thinking, I'm upset that I'm not included in there, but then I was thinking, well, maybe I haven't done enough to single myself out as someone that you want to talk about. And obviously I hadn't done, but at the same time, you've come- It was time, purely time limits. Well, yeah. yeah. You've come to me now for an interview. So obviously something I was doing was right. So, you know, it was something I was doing. It's the same, I mean, I'm a wrestling fan and uh, a lot of the, the re big wrestlers that sort of singled themselves out, Ric Flair and that, they had their certain style to them. And all I was doing was bringing a certain style to the table. Uh, speaking of your style, uh, you put it to use against the Calcium kid today. Uh, you guys both had a lot of kind of uh, ab absurd uh, ab approaches. Um, tell me about uh, how you prepared for this battle and... and yeah. Well, I spoke to Calcium a lot before the battle in terms of like, what do you want to include, you know, not what you include, but how sort of deep do you want to get? And it was understood from the start that it was going to be a jokey, friendly battle. Are you guys friends? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love the guy, do you know what I mean? And I, um, and I, and I pushed him to have this battle because I wanted him to be on a big card because he's kind of become disillusioned with the scene. I mean, a lot of people are complaining about people getting unfair chances, but I think those chances have been deserved by singling themselves out, as I said earlier. 
you can say Mr. Reed doesn't deserve an international. Mr. Reed deserves an international because Mr. Reed got an international. So you need to make your own fate in this game. So that's why I kind of push Calcium to get on this card because I feel he deserves it. I feel I deserve it. And I ask for him as opposed to a big international battle because he's someone I care about. It's like O'Shea brought some of his best lyrics against me, but against Charlie Clips, against Frank Stacks. He was average. And it's because he sort of enjoyed getting his teeth stuck into me, because he knows me and he likes me. And that's exactly the same how I feel about uh, Calcium, you know. Okay. And uh, what did you think of his approach for you? I, I said earlier in an interview that um, it's hard to listen to your opponent's bar. Don't, don't repeat stuff in interviews. So give us original content. No, no, I'm saying my opinion is that it's hard to listen to your opponent's bars while you're trying to not only think of your own, because I've, as I said, I've been working hard and this stuff's not drilled into my head. It's still quite fresh to me and I've been changing it for the last minute. Um, so, where was I? So, yeah, so it. it I, I couldn't listen, I couldn't take in what he was saying as he was saying it, so it's almost annoying having a good opponent because you don't get to appreciate what they've said until you watch it back afterwards. So. But it, it makes for watching the battle back better because when I'm going against someone who does, I feel doesn't give me what I give them, I just skip their rounds and I know exactly what seconds are my favourite rounds that they haven't given back to me, so it's good to be able to just watch the battle start to finish. Did, did he distract you at all? Um with the lollipop that uh, he was... No, no, it was perfect fodder for a flip. It instantly came to me. I saw him sticking, sucking a lollipop. It's your buddy's cock. And then from there, you work backwards. So you've got that basis of that's the punchline. Da, 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 da. Just throw whatever you want in there at the start, because that's pointless. The crowd, the crowd almost react to the more pointless stuff than the kind of slightly clever setup. And usually when the rapper's concentrated on a slightly clever setup, they tend to negate the punchline. Whereas what I do is put all my thought into that rhyming couplet that's going to get me to there and then throw whatever in because it's just a garden gate and a mansion, do you know what I mean? Uh, what's next for you? Uh, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm to you in fact this time. <laughs> Battlerap.com, seriously though, they're doing big things for the scene and I really appreciate being a part of it. Um, as I said earlier, uh, I'm going to hopefully do a battle against O'Shea at the April Fool's event, but it's a wrestling bar battle. I've got some really sort of in mark type uh, punchlines for a wrestling battle. If that doesn't happen at the April Fool's event, it will happen at a wrestling event. Uh, and there's going to be some surprises there, but I'll get knocked out. So, yeah. All right, pamphlet. Thank you very much. Thank Good to meet you. Very much.